Welcome once again to M5's English language learning program, Let's Speak English. I'm Gav Duncan, and I'm here on your TV screen to help you learn English. Now, are you sitting comfortably? Yes? Good. And are you ready for today's lesson? Yes? Good. OK, well, let's learn English together. And we're here again, back here in the studio, ready for another lesson. Fantastic. OK, well, I hope you're all comfortable. I hope you had your lunch earlier and I hope you're not hungry. Now is the time for you to sit down, put your feet up and enjoy some more English with the Let's Speak English team. Make sure that your coffee is nice and hot. It is? Good. Then off we go. Let's get stuck in to a today's lesson. OK. So what did we see this week? Come on. I know you all remember. That's right, a doodle doodle doo. Hit the postman right on the noggin. This week, we learned to describe when people are ill. We learned that for a lot of illnesses, we use the form of have got. I've got a stomachache, for example, or I've got a toothache. We can also say that he's got a sore throat and she's got a broken leg. We looked at mini questions, question tags, didn't we? And we saw how we normally add a question tag to the end of a sentence. It's a lovely day, isn't it? When we use question tags, we have to be careful of one thing. If the sentence is positive, we use a negative question tag, like this. It's a lovely day, isn't it? So in that example, the sentence is positive and the question tag, isn't it, is negative. Here's another example. Jimmy Page is a guitarist, isn't he? Did you see? The sentence is positive, but the question tag is negative. What about this one? Darth Vader kills people and destroys planets, doesn't he? Again, because the sentence is positive, the question tag is negative. Now, what about the other way around? What do we do when the sentence is negative? Well, what do you think? That's right. If the sentence is negative, then the question tag is positive, like this. Yoda isn't very tall, is he? Now here, the sentence is negative, so the question tag is positive. Here's another one. Ferry doesn't like Palinka, does he? Again, because the sentence is negative, the question tag has to be positive. OK, and one more for luck. You didn't kill the dog, did you? No, of course not. So once again, the sentence is negative, so the question tag has to be positive. OK, so let's try a few of those to practice. You don't have a scooter. No, I don't. OK, what's the correct question tag? Well, is the sentence positive or negative? Correct, the sentence is negative. So that means that the question tag has to be positive, doesn't it? Yes. And the sentence is in the present simple, which means that the question tag uses the verb do. So the correct question tag is do you? You don't have a scooter, do you? No, I don't. OK, good. Let's try another one. You can play the piano. Yes, I can. I'm Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. OK, so this sentence is what? Positive or negative? That's right. This sentence is positive, which means the question tag has to be negative. Correct. 
OK, and which word are we going to use to make the question tag? Well, which word did we use in the sentence? Yes, in the sentence we used can. So now, in the question tag, we have to use the negative version of can. And what's the negative version of can? Can anyone remember? Yes, good. Correct the whack a squillow monkey in the tree. The negative of can is can't. So the question tag is can't you? You can play the piano, can't you? Yes, I can. I'm Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Brilliant. OK, one for the road. You don't know Chewbacca. No, I don't. OK, so the sentence is negative, which means the question tag must be what? That's right. If the sentence is negative, the question tag is positive. So the correct question tag is do you? You don't know Chewbacca, do you? No, I don't. Great, fantastic, wonderful. OK, now what else did we look at this week? Well, we saw Dave Squid's girlfriend for the first time, didn't we? We learned that Dave's girlfriend's first name is Loretta. Loretta's surname is Sweat. We saw Loretta go to the same hotel where Mary's brother, Gordon, works. Gordon is the receptionist at the Marveloso Splendido Hotel. Loretta went to the hotel for a job interview with Mr. Williams, the hotel manager. At first, we didn't know what the job interview was for, but when we heard about Loretta's CV and experience, a CV is a piece of paper you show to someone when you want to get a job. Your CV has all the information the employer needs to see. Your CV tells the employer where you went to school, how well you did in school, where you went to university, how well you did in university. If you worked before, your CV tells people where you worked and for how long. Your CV is designed to show people that you are the person they need. They should give the job to you. Loretta is a black belt in several martial arts, and she used to teach soldiers self-defense. Loretta is also an expert in alarm and security systems. We don't know exactly what the job at the hotel is, but I think Mr. Williams is looking for a head of security for the hotel. Mr. Williams said that Loretta's experience and qualifications were relevant. This means that her experience and qualifications are connected to the job. On Loretta's CV, she included information that was relevant to the job. Information about her martial arts skills and training and information about her knowledge of alarm and security systems. She didn't tell Mr. Williams her favourite colour because that information isn't relevant. That information is irrelevant. If someone wants a job as a computer engineer, the information that they like pizza and classical music is not relevant information. An employer wants to know about your computer abilities, not your favourite food. Now, this week we also learned some new prepositions of movement, and we started practising giving directions. Now, let's practise some more directions using this map. Listen to me as I tell you where the bus goes and follow the route of the bus on the map. OK, are you ready? Then I'll begin. The bus comes into town under the motorway bridge. After the motorway bridge, the bus drives down the road until it reaches the traffic lights. The bus passes the museum and the town hall on the right, and the bus goes past the school on the left. 
the bus normally stops at the traffic lights. The traffic lights are often red. When the lights turn green, the bus turns left at the traffic lights and then turns right at the first corner. The bus follows the road and then turns right at the next corner. The bus then drives to the next corner and turns right again. The bus drives past the post office and the pet shop on the left to the traffic lights and stops. When the lights change to green, the bus turns left at the traffic lights, drives along the road and then takes the first road on the right at the town hall. Then the bus drives along this road, past the town hall and the back of the museum. At the corner, the bus takes the first load on the left and then turns left again to reach the bus station. Great! Well done! Brilliant! We didn't get lost. And now, here's Enid! She's finished her makeup and she's ready for you now. Hi, Enid! Come on in! The stage is all yours! What ho, people! Hello, hello, my dears, and uh, how are you all today? Fine, I hope. Now, today I heard you learning some new prepositions and talking about directions with Gav. I'd like to offer some help with directions as well. Now, when you need help with directions, you have to ask someone to help you, don't you? Okay, we know how to ask people to help, don't we? We say, excuse me, can you help me? We always start with excuse me because we're polite. Now, what do we say next? That's right. We say something like, I'm trying to get to Chief Mangasuta Butalezi cul-de-sac. We could also say something like, I'd like to go to Chief Mangasuta Butalezi cul-de-sac. Now, when the person replies, it's likely that there's one word they'll use a lot. When British people give directions, they love to use the verb take. They won't say turn left at the first street, but they'll say take the first left. The two sentences mean exactly the same, but the British always use the word take when they give directions. They normally won't say Follow the road past the bank and the hotel, then turn left at the second road. They'll say, follow the road past the bank and the hotel, then take the second left. So remember to listen out for the word take when someone is giving directions, and you'll find Chief Mangasuta Butalezi cold this like in no time. Oh, is that the time? I'm off, my dears. Toodle pip pip chili bye. Oh, she's gone. Okay then. Bye, Enid. We'll see you next lesson. Okay, well, we're out of time. That's all the time we had for today's lesson. I had fun today. I hope you had fun too. Thanks for watching. You've been watching me, Gav Duncan on M5's English language learning program, Let's Speak English. I'm Gav Duncan. I can't run as fast as Usain Bolt, and I can't sing as well as Orkovac Sylvester. I'm Gav Duncan, reminding you to re-watch our videos. You can find them on the internet at www.m5tv.hu, and you can also find the vocabulary from our lessons together. OK, that's all we have time for today. So I'll see you next lesson. See you later. Bye.